we can measure phonation in a variety of ways. Acoustic analysis of phonation looks at the cycle of repetition of the sound waveform in order to measure the frequency and amplitude that result from phonation. This is relatively easy to do. Any computer with a microphone can do it. This tells us things about phonation at least indirectly in terms of the rate of vibration of the vocal folds uh, and how much sound pressure is being used to push the vocal folds apart for amplitude. There are some interactions of vocal fold activity with other articulations. So for example, there's tension that comes from the base of the tongue through the hyoglossus and the genioglossus muscles that might have an influence on fundamental frequency that aren't, that aren't directly related uh, to phonation. We can observe phonation visually uh, using endoscopy, and there's an endoscopy technique known as stroboscopy, where we get a, a fake slow motion view of vocal fold vibration. So the vocal folds are vibrating in real time, but a flashing light is used to make a strobe effect uh, that lets you look at the cycle of vibration across multiple cycles. In addition, there are high-speed cameras um, that can directly observe the vibration of the vocal folds. The As You Learn site for the class has a couple of examples of um, endoscopy posted on it. Uh, the rigid endoscopy example does have an example of stroboscopy at the end, where if you listen to it, you can hear the voice uh, phonating, uh, but the vocal folds appear to be moving in slow motion. can also track uh, vocal fold uh, movement, or the state of the glottis, I guess I should say, using electroglottography. Uh, in electroglottography, a very mild electric current is passed across uh, the glottis using electrodes that are put on the surface of the neck. When the glottis is closed, more electricity can flow, and when the glottis is open, uh, no electricity flows. So here's an example of the sort of output you might get from electroglottography. When there's greater current flow, so the peaks on this orange curve, that would be the case where the uh, vocal folds are maximally closed during the glottal cycle, and then where there is no current flow, that would be the um, state of the glottis being uh, relatively open during the cycle. So we can look at the uh, cycle of opening and closing in glottography and also get an idea of the rate of vibration of the vocal folds. The vocal folds vibrate at a frequency that's called the fundamental frequency. The perceptual correlate of this frequency is the pitch of the voice. So we hear differences in fundamental frequency of the sound waveform of speech as changes in pitch. Um, this distinction is somewhat important to people who do speech science, for example. A lot of people that write about um, the voice don't necessarily uh, differentiate fundamental frequency from the perception of it in pitch, so you may see those terms used interchangeably. Similarly, uh, the intensity of the sound waveform correlates with our perception in terms of loudness. We can increase intensity in speech by increasing subglottal pressure by using a more forceful exhalation during speech production. We can also increase intensity by increasing the compression and tension of the vocal folds using our adductors and tensors uh, so that the vocal folds have to be blown apart more forcefully and will snap back together more, for more forcefully. So this will re uh, release larger, stronger bursts of air that uh, correlates to louder speech. Phonation and the voice is used in a variety of ways in language. The voiced voiceless distinction is important to a lot of languages, uh, contrasting sounds that are otherwise the same uh, consonant phonemes, uh, except for a difference in phonation, like the difference between s and z. The pitch and loudness of the voice is also used in intonation and stress. We use changes in the voice to mark sentence structure or to highlight important words. So for example, the pitch rises at the end of a question, the pitch falls at the end of making a list, uh, and your pitch and your loudness peak on important words. Differences in phonation in terms of voice quality can also be used as a sociolinguistic variable uh, related to gender, for example, or other cultural characteristics. Here's an example of acoustic analysis of the voice. Uh, we have two different displays here uh, in a kind of a light shading. We have a waveform display uh, with vertical blue lines across it. 
Those vertical blue lines are computer estimates of where the pulses of vocal fold vibration occur. The bottom display shows a spectrogram, and superimposed over that spectrogram is a blue line with an estimate of the fundamental frequency of vibration of the vocal folds on the basis of the pulses that are in the waveform. In this particular um, track of the fundamental frequency, you see that it starts a little bit higher and decreases a little bit over the course of what has been said here. Um, that kind of change from high to low or from low to high uh, can reflect a variety of things, uh, including intonation. Uh, here we have a kind of blurry example taken out of a book for intonation. Um, we have the same sentence, Nancy bought a new house on Thursday, but uh, what the pitch track, the little curved lines, would look like depending on where the stress is, uh, is different. If you focus stress on Thursday, Nancy bought a new house on Thursday, you would get a pitch contour like the first one. The second one, we have a focus on house. Nancy bought a new house on Thursday. The third one has a focus on new. Nancy bought a new house on Thursday. And the last one has a focus on Nancy. Nancy bought a new house on Thursday. The difference in meaning between these various sentences in terms of the focused word uh, basically is uh, something like that's contrastive information. So in the first sentence, maybe the person thought it was on Tuesday and you're correcting them and telling them it's on Thursday. Or maybe that's the new, uh, the new information you may have been discussing. Uh, Nancy buying a new house but then the particular day that happened is a new piece of information that you introduce, uh, and so you put stress on that word. Variation in fundamental uh, frequency, variation in vibration of the vocal folds, is affected by the length, the mass, and the tension of the vocal folds. One place you see this is differences between individuals. So for example, women have shorter and lighter vocal folds, and theirs tend to vibrate at a higher fundamental frequency. Men have longer and heavier vocal folds, uh, and so they violate, vibrate at a lower frequency. Uh, small children have very small light vocal folds, so their uh, vocal folds would vibrate at a very high frequency. Within an individual, we can also control variation in fundamental frequency with our tensor and relaxer muscles. Contracting the cricothyroid muscles and the vocalis muscle will lengthen and tense the vocal folds that will raise the fundamental frequency. Contracting the thyromuscularis muscle will shorten the vocal folds that will lower the fundamental frequency. This difference in fundamental frequency comes primarily from changing the ratio of length to mass of the vibrating part of the vocal fold. So if it's shorter and thicker, it's going to vibrate at a lower frequency. If it's longer and thinner, it's going to vibrate at a higher frequency.